today we are going to see how to create a disintegrate effect. Hi, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently developing Rabbit's Tail, links below for more. And I'm gonna show you this effect that can be used for an animated character or a static object, which is commonly used when an enemy dies. For example, like in Demon Souls. Which, by the way, I once recreated a similar effect, but today I'm gonna show you a more efficient method. So, let's jump right into this, and if you wanna get this project, it's all available on my Patreons page, as well as many, many other assets that you can use for your games. Oh, by the way, shout out to Unity for sponsoring this video, they have an amazing sale going on in the Unity Asset Store, and it's a great time to finally get that asset you were looking for, or that you didn't know about, like for example Feel, Amplify Bundle, RPG Builder, and my mega packs that have so many effects included and many more assets. Make sure to use the link below, plus if you spend over $100 and use this code, you get an additional 10%. So as you can see in this case I'm using a character, which is from Mixamo by the way, you can pick up any character from this list and any animation. <coughs> yeah. For this effect to work, it doesn't necessarily need to be a character, but for any object you use, you need to turn on read or write on the model import settings. Otherwise, VFX Graph won't be able to spawn particles on the object. Right, so I'm gonna start by creating an empty game object, rename it, reset the transform, and drag and drop the character I'm going to use. Parent it. Exactly. And, well, let's start with the Dissolve shader. We are going to recreate basically what you are seeing here, the default material from Unity, a fraction of it, actually, which is the PBR settings. So with right-click in a folder, we can start with the unlit shader graph or with a blank shader graph. We can go ahead and create a material out of the shader we created. So you can see this in action directly in the object or in the character. In my case, I'm going to create two materials because this skin and mesh renderer, as you can see, it has two elements in the materials for two different textures. In case your object doesn't use animation, it will be a mesh renderer, by the way. And I'm going to replace the existing materials of this monster model. It becomes pink, that's because we don't have any target I'm gonna say it's for universal because I'm using URP. And I'm gonna turn on allow material override so you can have control over all of these options directly in the inspector. And that's pretty much it. If we save it, it should become gray, the default color. So like I was saying, we need to recreate the default material from Unity, basically the PBR settings. And I'm only gonna show you the main features of a PBR material, like the albedo and normals map. So for the albedo, we are going to need a color, the base color, and a texture 2D for the albedo texture. I'm going to assign the default texture that comes with this character, and I'm going to sample the albedo, and then we can multiply the base color. Let me just say it's white color, increase the alpha to 100, and set the mode to HDR just in case. And then multiply these two together, and we have the base color. But if we save this, yeah, it becomes fully white because of the color, but if you go to your model and assign the respective textures, the respective albedo textures, you will get this. That's the first step, the albedo. Next step is fairly simple, you can also create textures for the metallic or smoothness properties. I'm only going to create floats for the metallic and smoothness. I'm gonna say they are a slider. Metallic, I'm gonna leave it at zero, for the default value. And the smoothness, I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.5 for the default value. I'm gonna connect them respectively, and that's it for, and that's it for these two. The last one is the normals texture. The last one is the normals map. I'm gonna create a new texture 2D. And once we sample this, 
If we assign the normal map texture to the normals, as you can see, it becomes orange. That's because we need to say the type is normal. And that's it. One last thing you can do is connect this to a normal strength node to control, well, the strength of the normal maps. You can also create a float for this. I'm going to leave it at default value of 0 0.5. And then connect this to the normal input of the fragment function. And that's it. You have the base of a PBR material. A very basic setup. But it is a very important step for us now to create the dissolving effect. We can create a group for this, by the way. Right, so the dissolving effect. Let me just fix here normal maps. Assign them to the materials that I'm using for this character. All right, becomes, it becomes really great. Look at this. Just with four properties. Albedo, smoothness, metallic and normals. For the dissolve. We are going to use a procedural noise. You can also use a texture for this, a noise texture. I'm going to use the simple noise. And the first property I'm going to create is the dissolve scale. So I can connect it down here and say the default value is 40. If we connect this directly to the alpha, we have already the dissolve effect going on. If I turn on the main preview and play with the alpha clip, nothing happens just because we need to turn on alpha clipping. We need to enable it, basically, right here. As soon as we do it, as you can see in the main preview, we are indeed eroding or dissolving the object. So that's pretty much it. Now, all you got to do is create a float property for, well, the dissolve amount, which is going to be a slider between 0 and 1, and it's going to connect to the alpha clip threshold with a default value of 0 0.33. But as you can see in the main preview, we don't have any glow, any outline for the dissolve. We can control that by connecting the simple noise to a step node, which will basically start clipping some values. And if we connect the dissolve amount to the in value, nothing will change. But if we add a very small value to the dissolve amount and replace this connection to the in of the step, and then connect this to the emission, as you can see, we have now a white glow, a white outline for the dissolve. Only because we have added a small value down here, which means that this will control the dissolve white. So let's create a float for that with a default value of 0 0.02, for example. All that is left to do now is add some color. So let's create a property color property for dissolve color. I'm going to pick a blue, something like this, and increase the intensity as well. And finally, we need to multiply this with the step node and replace this to the emission. And that's pretty much it. We have now a dissolve shader. If we save this, as you can see in my character, we don't have any transparency, mostly because in the two materials that I'm using, Alpha clipping is disabled. So I'm going to enable it. And as soon as I do it, here we go. Looking very nice. We have this dissolve amount, the sliders that control the dissolve. But for this to work out properly, we are going now to need some code, a very simple basic code to control the dissolve amount property of the shader. So let's create a C sharp script, dissolving controller, for example, and add it to the empty the parent of the character. I'm going to open this up. And the first thing we need is a variable, a public variable for the skinned mesh renderer. So we can get the materials from the skinned mesh. Then we need a private material array to store those materials from the skinned mesh. And on the start function, we can say that if skinned mesh is different than null, then the skinned materials array it's going to be equal to the skin and mesh dot materials. And in the update function now, we can say that every time we press spacebar, we are going to start a coroutine. We can call it the dissolve co, which we are going to declare down here, and it's going to be an I numerator. Let's check if the skin and materials has any material first if the length is bigger than zero. 
And while the skidded materials, the first material for example, we can get the float, which is the solvent amount, I'm going to talk about it in a moment. While it is less than 1, we are going to increase, and not decrease. We are going to increase the solvent amount. The name for the get float is the reference, not the name itself of the property. It's the reference of the property. You can copy this. If it doesn't have any name, you can rename it to the reference. Just make sure that in the get float, it's the same name, the same string. Now up here we need a counter, a float that's going to start at zero and we are going to increment this counter with a dissolve rate that we are going to declare in a moment. And now for every material in the skinned materials array, for every material we are going to set float, the dissolve amount float, the exact same name. It's going to be equal to the counter, like this. And down here now, we wait a little bit, so we are going to use a yield return. That's why we are using a coroutine. New wait for seconds, we are going to wait for the refresh rate that we can declare up here. Let's copy the dissolve rate, create a public float for the dissolve rate. Default value of 0 0.0125. And a public float for the refresh rate, which can be double of the dissolve rate, 0 0.0025. And that's pretty much it. If you save this now and go to the character assigned the skinned mesh, remember if you are using a static object, it's going to be a mesh render and not skinned mesh. Once we have assigned the skinned mesh, you can press play now. Make sure this whole amount starts at zero, by the way, of the materials. And every time you press spacebar, here we go, it dissolves away. I'm using blue, you can use red, whatever color you feel like, right? Awesome, so that's a big step done. Our next step now is to add some particles to this and we are going to use VFX graph. We want particles to come out of the character. So create a visual effect graph, rename it and parent this to the empty. As you can see, it should be below the character. I'm gonna press the edit button to open this up and we don't want this to emit particles forever, right? We want to control the duration that it emits particles. So we can select the spawn block up here and say the loop duration is going to be constant as well as the loop count. We want this to loop one time and the duration can be a float with a default value of 1.5, for example. And now it emits particles for a second and a half, which is nice. Let's increase the particle count by setting the constant spawn rate to 2000, to for example. If we increase the rate, well, we need to increase the capacity of this system. Bounds can be manual. And we are going to use this velocity. A value that I like to use is 151 and then minus 1, 2 and minus 1. So it goes mostly up and a little bit to the sides. That's for the motion of the particles. Down here we have the lifetime, the duration of each particle. It's way too much, so let's decrease it to be between 0 0.2 and 1.2 but we want this to spawn on the surface of this monster of this character so we are going to need a skid and mesh position block remember if it's a static object you can use the mesh position block that's enough we need to feed the skin and mesh this skin and mesh so let's create a property for that a skin and mesh renderer connect it down here and now we can choose the placement if it's vertex edge or surface I'm gonna go with surface and then we still need to tell it the transform of this object, the scale, the rotation and the position. So we can use a set position block and to this we are going to feed literally a transform block. But first we need to tell it the current position of each particle so it doesn't get lost that position. We are going to connect this to a transform position, exactly. And in order for this to know the scale, the rotation and the position of the character, we need a transform property. Connect it right here and connect this to the set position. If we save this, as you can see, we can feed the skin and mesh render, drag and drop it. But for the transform, it's not that simple. We are not going to input direct values from the character. Fortunately, we have a VFX property binder, a script that comes with VFX graph. 
we are going to use in a moment. For now, let's control the size of these particles because we cannot see if they are spawning on the character. Let's use a set size before the set size of our life. Make sure it's random between something like 0 0.005 and 0 0.03, for example. But now the set size of our life, we need to say it's multiply. And the curve is going to go from big to small. And that's it. Uh, much better. So, like I was saying, the transform, we are not going to input direct values. We are going to use a VFX property binder script that basically it asks us for the property that we want to bind. It's basically a transform, literally. The name of the property, it's also a transform. You can copy from here. Control C, Control V. And the target, in this case, are the bones, the root. Mixamo exports always the hips as the root. So let's use that. And here we go. It's spawning with the right scale and in the right position and with the right rotation in relation to the character. Awesome. Now it's only a matter of making this beautiful. So I'm going to give you a few tips, but that's essentially it, the effect. If you want to know more about character effects, I have a tutorial about it, by the way. And if you want to know more about VFX graph, well, then check my channel. So let's say that the color of a life, it's going to be multiply the composition, the alpha composition. So we can fade out the particles. Let's remove this key. Exactly. And now we can use a set color, which we want to control in this specter. So I'm going to create a color property. I'm going to set it to red, but it should be blue. Anyway, I'm also going to increase the intensity. What I want to show you is how to trigger this via the script. It's actually fairly simple. Let's go up here and import a library using unity engine.vfx. So we can use VFX graph. And we want a public visual effect property. Let's call it VFX graph, for example. And in the coroutine, in the enumerator, before checking if the skin and materials array has anything, we can say if VFX graph is different than null, then VFX graph dot play. And if we test this out now, as you can see, every time I press spacebar, this character disintegrates himself. Cool, right? Let's do the final adjustments. For example, let's switch this texture to the default part that comes with Unity or any other text that you have around that's better. They become a bit smaller. Another thing you can do is select everything, Ctrl C, Ctrl V to duplicate this. And let's create some dark particles. They can rise up slower and move a little bit less, maybe leave a little bit less as well. The rate could be lower as well. And down here we are going to multiply their size 10 times, for example. And the color is going to be black. And it's very important in the color of a lifetime that this alpha key becomes super low, like 40, for example. I'm going to rename this to dark and the other one to bright because we want to say in the VFX graph, in the inspector, that dark is rendered before bright. And as you can see, it adds like a burning effect, a burning touch. If this was red, it would look awesome. <laughs> I choose blue, but I think you get the idea. I highly recommend you to check out my other tutorials, especially these ones, because you will learn about particles and how to add other effects for this. But yeah, that's essentially it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you want, you can add a delay before the effect starts, just to synchronize with the dissolve shader, for example. It's all in the spawn module. Choose before loop. And that's it. And then trigger the animator to play the die animation. And that's pretty much it. And that's how I got here. By the way, you can as well add a turbulence in the update particle for an extra spicy touch. So that's it guys, if you want to support me that would be awesome, you can get your hands on this project and many many other assets, they are all available on my patrons page, you guys will get plenty of stuff and you keep the channel alive. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month and a special shout out to the top tier patrons, 
which are 3D Sorcery, Alexandre Carvalho, Alparari Chai, Analog Up Studios, Aquiles Benitas, Aviato Bali, Kainarino, Silona, Kruby Dubidu, Prizy Studio, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Dave Game Development, Diego Marques, Duitran, Effect Yellow, El Sharif, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, GMP, KC Miller, Canon Anselm, Lucky Campbell, Lee Ann Holt, Mark Anum, Matheus Bragança, Michael Gann, Michael Laid, Minazuki, Mior Mauve, Moa, Mortar, Naru, Nat Sims, NGY, Oitsk, Original Game Chief, Pradeep Sen, Quanto Journal, Radioactive Bullfrog, Rachanan, Revenant Games, Very Suta, Will Hughes, Will Poilin, Xian Pian Ling, and In Good Daz. You guys are amazing. Thank you all for your amazing support. It keeps the channel going. It's very much appreciated. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video and I truly hope to see you in the next one. So thanks for watching and bye.